Hobby's own products. Are they worth the money? Let's find out. Hi, welcome to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. When I shoot and edit these videos that are normally about 30 minutes long, they take me about a day and a half. Sadly, the day and a half isn't just the shooting and, edit and the editing. There's actually a lot of clearing away to do to start. Um, and that's because the place ends up overrun with stuff. And as you can see from the black hessian behind me, it hides a multitude of sins that are buried underneath the layout. And for a change today, I haven't bothered clearing the stuff off the layout that just becomes one great big shelf. And this is of a particular interest on the subject for today's video. Hattons is a major model railway supplier based on the outskirts of Liverpool and three or four weeks ago I received an email from them asking me if I would like to do a product review uh, for the Hobby Zone modular storage system and there's a link below to those products. I've taken them up on this offer and the products arrived yesterday. However, when I watch YouTube reviews, I'm always suspicious on whether they're paid reviews because you don't necessarily get a true representation of what the product performs like. So just to let you know, this isn't a paid review. If the product's great, I'll tell you. And if it's not so great, I'll be perfectly honest with you as well. So let's open up the box and see what we've got. Lots of packaging. Fair play, it does seem fairly well packaged. And one, two, three, four, five, six boxes. Okay, this is the brushes and tools module. and a set of instructions. Seems quite straightforward. So um, there's uh, of two end panels and obviously three racks of uh, kind of brush holders. So what have we got in the box? There's a fair few bits, I must admit. Some magnets. So we'll just, we'll just take a little look at the instructions. And the items required are wood glue, a hammer, paper tape and a damp cloth. Glue organiser elements in the order shown in the schematic. Use the glue in the points of the organiser's elements. Furthermore, the hammer would be useful to map to the... Whoops. The hammer would be useful to mounting of magnets in order to temporarily maintain the parts in the right places, use the paper tape. After gluing elements, erase the glue squeezed out of the slots using the damp cloth. When the glue is dry, the organiser will be ready for use. Seems straightforward. So what I shall do now, I think I'll do a dry assembly first because um, we don't want to run into any snags and uh, take it from there. Well, that's the dry run complete. And did I need to do it? Well, yes, I did. The, uh, the schematic diagram isn't um, as involved as you might hope it would be. Um, and it tells you to put the base down, then put the, the three verticals on. What it doesn't actually show you um, is which way the base should go. So you can walk yourself into a few problems. If I just take it apart a second and pull out these little bits. So you have the base, um, can you see that? Yes, let's go a little bit white tighter. So you have the base and then you need to put on the sides. But you could quite easily have the base unit upside down, which would put this slot here. And if you did that, then you'd be gluing this other vertical in the wrong place. 
So you do need to do the dry run first. And similarly, um, this holds the paint brushes at the back of it and you could easily put it in the wrong way around. So you do need to pay attention, do a dry run and it will be good to go. It was useful doing the dry run and I also noticed that this little storage rack um, had some blockages and it was just the swarf that was left over from when it was drilled. And it's a little three mil drill just to run through to clear that out but that was no big deal. Um, in the instructions it mentions four tools, there's some white tape, um, this is a kind of a, a low tack tape um, to hold it in place whilst the glue dries. I've got a pair of scissors to cut the tape. The wood glue I'm using is Gorilla wood glue, I'm sure you've all seen this stuff before and it sort of goes really tacky after about 30 minutes and then cures overnight so I'll be using that. Um, a damp cloth to wipe off the excess glue and it also mentions a hammer um, for beating in the magnets um, which I will do much later once the glue is dried because the last thing I want to do is start beating it with a hammer and the whole thing comes apart. So yeah, right, let's glue it together. Okay, first thing I do is with the tape is rather than cut it when I need it, I cut it first so I don't get into a bit of a pickle suddenly when I start to, uh, when I need to tape bits down and I find things are falling apart, I can just simply reach for the tape um, and it will be to hand. I'm sure I could use small plastic clamps for some of this job but as it's not listed in the instructions I'll, leave it, I'll be leaving my clamps safely in the toolbox. Right, so there's my uh, pieces of tape all to one side ready to go, easy to hand. So what I need to do first is just simply um, glue these three pieces in and then glue that one onto the back. As I mentioned before, make sure that this is the small one because these are slightly longer and uh, they'll all be good. Right, so let's have a look at this glue. Hopefully you can see fine from there. It's all gone quiet. A bit too much glue there actually. I'll take some of that off. But up bum Nope, that was a mistake. You obviously don't need glue on that section because it doesn't touch down, it's only on the back bit. Ba -ba -bum. So pop that one into place. Damp cloth. Take away the excess glue. Uh, same with those two on the ends. I can also put some on the side there. That bears against that bottom surface. Again, wipe the glue, uh, wipe the excess glue away. Take a bit of advice, do the end ones first and then do that one. We'll work your way along rather than do the middle one first. That wasn't the most sensible thing I've ever done. And then finally the last one. So this little surface there on the inside. On the on the bottoms. -da -bum. And pop it in there. That seems easy. Right. Now if I jack it up on its end, I can then use a bit of tape. hold it in place whilst it dries. Okay, a little bit of glue on the edges there to be removed. Seeps out of everywhere really. Right, put it back over and then we move on to the back plate. So I shall 
put the glue on the on the recesses of the back plate so I should put some glue around those bits there and then offer of that onto there. And if we offer that up to there, and it should just fit in nicely. That's what I can't do is see. Yep. Okay, damp, damp cloth on the glue. And as I mentioned, put the tape around the sides to hold it in place. Swing that around so I can see it. A little bit of uh, glue to be wiped off. Right, that's the first bit. Remember when you put this together, if you do buy one of these kits, the small, the, the inside one is smaller than the outside too. Now I've laid the next pieces in order uh, across this bench. So this one goes in next um, and is the base for the paint brushes. And obviously the bigger paint brushes, um, as you can see by the size of the holes, go towards the back. So that one will go there. Next will come this one here. And then finally that one there. Right, so we'll now glue those in place and it will give it a little bit more rigidity, I imagine. So I shall pop a little bit of glue onto this. Clearly we don't need a huge amount. And then of course getting it the right way around so that the big, um, the big holes are at the back. Pop them into place and slide them down. Glue on my fingers as usual. Push it into place and remove the excess glue. Easy. Next one goes there. So I could do with a bit of glue along this edge here where it fits into that recess and then obviously onto these parts there. So let's do it the other way and pop some glue on those bits first. And then onto the back edge of this. Strikes me as a good idea this because they say that and I'm told that paintbrushes should always dry vertically. So by popping them into this, it does make sort of perfect sense. Right, double check. Yeah, we're definitely in the right place. That goes into the recess at the back. Pop those two onto there. Make sure it's in. Pop off the uh, excess glue again. And that's that one in place. Okay, exciting bit more tape. Put that there. A little bit more glue to wipe off. I find it difficult to put a small amount of glue on. It's obviously just a, my fault really. I can't really put down too much. Uh, very small amounts. Perhaps I've always been a bit um, 
over-cautious and I'd rather over-engineer things than, uh, than find they come loose. Right, so that's that one. And then finally, this one there glues on the top. So again, I shall pop a pop, drop a glue on the edges. No doubt too much again. And remembering that the large holes go at the back, so therefore this must be the piece that goes against the back unit. Making sure you can see. Give the glue a quick wipe. And let's be honest, if there's a bit of excess glue around, it's not going to, uh, it's not going to end the world, is it? Um, next bits are this, this one here, just check the instructions, is six and seven, yeah. So this one here then goes on the front. like so, so we'll glue that one in with a edge along the front there. Of course, you don't necessarily need to use an expensive glue, such as this Gorilla stuff. I'm sure almost any PVA will do. It's a case of using the glue that you really feel comfortable with, I think. Okay, there's my excess glue removed. Um, a couple more bits. There's one along the front now. Just a sort of finishing strip, I imagine. How can you see? Yep, still good. So, once more, I think I'll put it on the... just along the front edges of, the, of this uh, item. Drop more there. Excuse me while I turn it around from you a moment. Fit that one in there. Nope, I'm going to take that out. I need to put a drop, I think, on the edges. back in. Damp cloth. Okay, that seems good. A little bit of tape there to hold that steady. Two more bits. It's just a little small stowage that slides in here, like so. And then finally a dowel that goes along through there. Right, so let's glue this one. So I'll try and it makes contact in a strange area, really. So I think we'll do it there and there. See if that holds it still. No doubt I'll spread it all over this now on the way in. Right. A little bit on that surface. Remove the glue. And there we are, more or less finished.
There is a small dowel that fits in there, which I imagine is used to hold tapes and the like. So clearly I can't really glue it in if you're going to um, put small reels of tape on it because you'll need to be able to pull it out. If of course that's what it's for. So there's our little item and I'll leave that and come back to you in about 30 minutes um, when it's dried. Well half an hour has gone on and I've removed all the tape and um, yeah it's great. It's very rigid, it stays together, it's um, yeah, yeah, quite remarkable really considering the costs involved. So what can you actually do with it? Well here we are all loaded up. These paint brushes are quite expensive and um, as you'd expect you want to look after them, keep them um, tidy and in good condition. So when this thing's loaded up is it worth the money? Well, how much does it cost? £12, and I think that is a bit of a bargain really. Um, as long as you've got the room to poke it out the way, you can get to all your stuff. Um, and uh, I've popped screw, uh, pliers on the end here, and uh, you know, bits of drill bits and dremel bits in the front. Um, um, a, what do you call it? A, uh, a nail board in there. Um, yeah, it's good. I like it. £12, can't go wrong. Well, of the six units provided by Hattons, that one was probably the most simple and easiest to put together. So let's move on to the hardest, which is this one here. And this one is a five draw corner unit. We like a challenge, so we'll crack on. Again, I'll do a dry assembly first and then get back to you when it's time for gluing. So that's the dry run complete. And there's only one point that's worth mentioning and that concerns the fitting of the window on the little drawer units. So the drawer unit's made of six components. You have a base, you have two sides, and you have the back and the front, but also a small perspex window uh, that goes in the front. And if I zoom in a little tighter, on the sides, perhaps you can see that there's a, a small recess and this piece of perspex goes in the recess and there isn't a recess on the back edge. So the recess is only on the front and that's the one thing that it is possible to get wrong. So now we know what to watch out for. It's just a case, a simple case of gluing these in place. And there are four of these uh, draw units to do. So um, it's just a case of taking your time on the first one until you get the, the uh, feel of it. Um, and to be honest, it's just uh, a repeat. It's, you know, quite straightforward to be perfectly honest. So a bit of glue on the side for the, for the back one, pop those in. Oops, I forgot the glue on the back one there for that back edge. Then the back goes in. Like so. As usual, wipe the glue off straight away. It's one of those things that you're always going to have excess glue oozing out of the edges. But um, yeah, it's no big shakes. It's not... Uh, it's not as if this is a, a prototypical, you know, station piece that, uh, that has to be absolutely perfect. It's really um, a working tool as much as anything else. Mind you, that's no reason to take shortcuts either. So I get it back together. As usual, the pre-cut tape to go on the sides to hold it still whilst it... Uh, whilst it dries. Lovely, and then around to the front. And the way I do it is just pop a little bit of glue on the, on the bottom edge, because what we don't want to do is get any glue on the perspex. So a spot of glue on the bottom edge, and then um, just at the top on the inside of the, of the window frame, and that should hold it. And then all I do is pop the perspex into place. 
and then I don't believe it I've got it wrong way around wipe the glue off the top because that should have been on the bottom so try again so the glue goes on the bottom edge and then on the sides of the top and then pop that into place and you'll have no glue on the perspex and then as usual with the bits of tape just tape it into place and as you can see this one has the Hobby Zone logo on the front. And then a quick whiz around with the damp cloth and take off the excess glue. And there we go. So it's that for another three of those to do, and then I'll uh, assemble the main structure. So whilst the glue on the drawer units is drying, I'll assemble the main structure and this really is quite straightforward having of course done a dry run so those two are the runners for the center drawer which was constructed exactly the same way as the smaller drawers um, but a little bit simpler because there was no perspex window to put in those two and then you have two H type sections um, which go with here and here so what I will do first is glue these sections together before I offer it up to the main structure and to be perfectly honest you can do this in almost any order you like um, as long as you uh, clearly get a bit of a wiggle on because um, Obviously you don't want it to dry at an angle and it's only when it's totally assembled that it becomes sort of rigid, rigid and at 90 degrees to, uh, to everything else. So that's those. The next thing I need to do is put it on end, then glue these top lines. And then pop it onto the main structure like so quite straightforward so repeat for the other side I haven't been using this Gorilla Glue for very long and I must confess it is very very grabby unlike ordinary PVA that you might get from your DIY shop it does seem to grab quite quickly it's probably not the ideal nozzle that I'm using here having said that bum, bum, bum. sorry just having a quick thought here I put one of those wrong um, that this wall here hasn't got the holes for the magnets so I have to quickly whip that one off and pop this one on so regardless of how many times I do a dry run it's reassuring to know that I still get it wrong okay no harm done. So now we're back to this one. So that one must be the outside, so this must be the inside. So this one goes on there. And then we need to glue this one into place.
flip him over. Then as you can see there, the holes of the magnets are on both of the outside surfaces. And then finally we need to glue the, the lid on, and that will be the main structure complete. and it simply slots straight in. There we are. And then we know that all the, degree, the, all the angles are at 90 degrees. Everything is kind of flush. I'll just zoom back out and see if you can see that better. So that's kind of in and good to go. There's a few bits of glue here and there on the inside surfaces which don't really make any difference. Um, anything on the outside is the only ones that kind of really matter. Then it's time to do a bit of taping up. And I shall just flip it over. and we're nearly done. There's a couple of panels to go on the back and they're these type panels here, if I go wide. And these panels will naturally form um, the back surfaces of the cabinet. But I'm not gonna put this on just yet because what I wanna do now is put some weight on the top of here and then leave that for half an hour while it goes off. So I'll just flip it the right way up, which is there add a couple of books and I'll get back to you. So here's the finished item and as you can see all five drawers are fitted and inside this centre drawer if you can see there's some divisions so it uh, you know you can fit in there what you want without it rattling around. One little bit of advice is if you buy one of these and assemble it don't fit the drawers until the glue has fully cured. Um, I found that one of the drawers was just a little bit kind of iffy, a bit resistive to, to opening. Um, so I took out all the drawers, then it, let it, then it dried, and obviously everything's fine. So that's that one. It's a corner unit, so obviously something needs to go on top. And what I decided to, um, to try out was a paint holder. Now this comes in various uh, paint pot sizes, as it were, because clearly if you're using uh, Vallejo paints, it, they're not gonna, uh, it's not going to hold them securely. So you get different radius um, receptacles for the various paints you like to use. Me, I'm kind of, I am using more Vallejos these days, but I'm a kind of a rail match and humbrol kind of guy. And as you can see, um, it fits in there quite snugly. And as a whole unit, it works very, very well. So uh, I'm well pleased with that. So here's another component I've made up, and this is obviously a three drawer unit. And inside the drawers um, are little dividers. So that kind of makes sense to keep your, your knickknacks uh, safe, whether it be screws or buffer beam detail or whatever. Um, yeah, so there's a straightforward thing. But I did locate on the top those magnets. Um, and that was rather amusing really because you try hitting a magnet with a steel hammer and you find the magnets on the hammer rather than on the component. But anyway, I got them in in the end and if I pop this um, paintbrush holder on top and you can see it kind of locks in reasonably well. So there's quite, they're quite strong magnets. Um, and that's one of um, the, the sort of double units now that I've put together. So what did we end up in with in the end? So here are the finished six items. And what have we got? Well, we've got a sprue module, which comes in at nine pounds. And underneath that one, we've got that uh, six drawer unit, which is actually 19. The corner unit with the drawers is 24. And one of my favorites, the paint unit above it is 12 pounds. 
the three drawer unit uh, down here, another, another favourite of mine, um, is £15 and the brush unit is 12 So all that lot comes in at um, £91. If of course you know, your budget doesn't want to stretch to that or you might find that some of these bits aren't really suitable then you know it's quite easy because those these uh, four items here to me strike me as a sound investment they're good they're easy to put together um, and especially these the painting side of this um, suits my craft uh, to a T. There's a link below on the show more tab and that will take you to the Hatton site and show you the whole of the hobby zone range and it is certainly worth a look. In the meantime, that wraps this one up and you should know what to do now. There should be a link there to my Patreon site and a video here and here for you to watch. And if you haven't subscribed, then please do. And I'll see you in a week or so at the next one. Thanks a lot. Take care and bye bye.